Well, today, we, we want to welcome um, Michelle Beasley uh, is with us today. She's the manager of Student Disability Services at UIW. And um, she's going to talk to us about, um, about accessibility. And then we have Caesar, and, and really accessibility and online instruction. And then we have Caesar Hernandez, who's one of our instructional designers. And he's gonna follow, follow Michelle and talk a little bit about some of the tools that we have that will make accessibility um, uh, easier for you um, when you're creating um, resources for your online uh, and course. So Michelle, with that, I am just gonna turn it over to you. Okay, I think Caesar's trying to load the PowerPoint. Is that right, Caesar? That right? Yes. yes. Okay, Caesar, Caesar, yeah, he's gonna manage yeah. the PowerPoint. So it's good to it's good to see everybody, and um, uh, just you know we're all in our corners, and so whenever we can kind of get together like this and see each other, it's great and share some information. Um, I hope hope you all can uh, enjoy a three day weekend um, despite the situation going on. Um, but I hope everybody's well and staying safe and your families, and so. Um, yeah, I had to put the UIW courtyard there in my background because I miss, you know, going to the admin buildings. <laughs> I took that picture one day and I was looking through my old pictures. Anyway, I popped in a few. So if you recognize that, the courtyard behind the admin building. Um, anyway, so to get to get kind of started, I'm just going to kind of do like a brief overview um, of uh, related to accessibility and online instruction. Um, to, to preface this, um, I'm just gonna give you a little information of like who we are, um, how the structure of our area goes. So I'm the manager of student disability services. And then I have a director, Moises Torstano, who's also over a couple other offices. Um, so I'm primarily the day-to-day -day SDS person. Um, and then overseeing all of that is Sandy Macon, associate provost. And then, of course, Provost. So that's kind of how the, the area goes. And like I said, we're located in the administration building. If one day we can get back there, I would be glad to see my old office <laughs> in Suite 51, <laughs> um, basement level. Okay, go ahead to the next one. So, uh, and, and, you know, I'm not telling you anything here, but um, that you don't already know, but our, our, our whole thought behind um, accommodations and accessibility is, is providing every single student um, a supportive, challenging, diverse, and integrated environment. Um, particularly with accommodations like I do on a day-to-day -day basis, our accommodations are not meant to make the coursework um, for the content any easier. Um, we want it to be challenging, we want students to be challenged, and we also want to take advantage of the fact that we have a big diverse group of students and we can learn a lot from them and, and they can each other. So that's um, how we all support each other in getting, in getting this mission accomplished. Um, go ahead. So basically, the point of accessibility, even the point of accommodations, is that everybody is kind of starting at the same point as far as coming into a campus, starting classes. We want to, you know, you've heard that term, um, level playing field. Um, I, I like that term as well, or that phrase. And then also, you know, I, I think of it as like, let's get everybody at the same starting point. And so sometimes, um, students need the accessibility, the particular accommodations to get that done. We're not going to go through these individual laws. I just put them here. Um, of course, we're going to share these slides with you so you can maybe take time later if you want to go through and look at each one. But just to let you know, these are the particular laws that we do follow as far as accommodations and accessibility. Go ahead. So, so accessibility definitely ties directly into the mission of the university. Um, and you all know the mission of the university. I um, just like to point this out that by providing accessibility, by providing accommodations, 
you're directly supporting the mission of the university. And um, so we, as I said, welcome students with diverse backgrounds. So we're not only talking about with accessibility, students with disabilities, we're talking about other students as well, all kinds of different backgrounds. Um, you know, it could be cultural differences, et cetera. So um, accessibility also helps other areas besides disabilities. And we'll kind of um, get to that in, in a minute. Um, so again, as we come together and we, we share all this information, we are um, providing that support of mission and, and uh, learning a lot from each other because I can tell you, I have a lot of students that for instance, sign up to be a note taker for a student with disability. And that student at the end of the semester has, has, has uh, really understood um, the differences and the, the different backgrounds these students come from and the needs and many thought, never thought that another student might have, a dif have difficulty taking notes. Something like taking that this student thought was a simple process um, it could be very complex for other students. You can go ahead. So when we're talking about accommodations and we're talking about accessibility, what is the difference? Is there a difference? Um, you're, you are going to hear those words used interchangeably a lot. Um, they are very related. However, there are some differences. You also have heard the phrase universal design most likely, and you might already be incorporating some things into your courses. Um, so if you think of accessibility as universal design, that kind of explains it um, in a few words a little better as far as it kind of explains itself. Um, the, de the design is useful for pretty much everyone. Um, so if you kind of start your courses out in that respect, you're saving yourself a lot of work um, and not having to do it on the spur of the moment. So universal design is basically designing the environment, which is your classroom in this instance, your online classroom, um, to be usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without having to have a lot of accommodations that are more formal. So, so overall, the general consensus is, is that we want individuals with disabilities not to have to ask for every little thing. So we want them to be able to come. We want you to have a, a student in your classroom that maybe they didn't even have to request accommodation. Um, and it's giving them more independence. And, you know, the more independence they have, the, the more they're going to benefit from your courses. They're going to feel better about that, um, and it just eliminates some of the tasks that they have to perform. So they don't have to jump all these hoops to, you know, get this or that because it's already there. And, and you would be surprised at how, how much things would help people that you didn't even expect to need them, um, or, and the people themselves might not have expected to need them, accessibility, until they're in it, and then they benefit from it. So really, it, if you think about it, it makes your entire class go along better. Um, so when you're talking about specific accommodations, that's when you're gonna see a letter of accommodation from our office. And that just means we have talked with that particular individual with a disability. They have documented their disability or disabilities because a lot of times they're overlapping um, diagnoses. Um, and we've taken, taken the individual information from that student, what the challenges and what the barriers are for them, and we've come up with some specific accommodations that, that will benefit them, um, give them that full access to your courses. And, and that's upon their request. So again, that would, you know, accessibility opens up them not having to ask for every single little thing. Um, go ahead to the next. So as you can see, the, the main word across the board there is same. So we're talking about the same thing for everyone. Everybody's engaging um, in the same interactions. They're enjoying the same things. It's like they almost um, don't realize that they're having this benefit in the class. We want to be equal. Um, we definitely want to be effective. 
And um, so your, your keyword here is the same. So accessibility basically makes everything the same for everybody, no matter what they bring to the classroom. Um, that's the goal of accessibility or universal design is that the environment is what's changed. It's not the individual that has to change. It's the environment that needs to change. And so a person with disability could potentially be able to enter classes without having to come in at all and, and come up with um, or come to our office and ask for any specific accommodations. Okay, I saw a question there. Um, the idea of accommodating a hearing impaired student who might lip read if we're wearing masks. Well, you know, I've, you've probably seen online where some people are coming up with some masks that have a, um, a see-through shield um, as part of the design. So that's an, you know, that's an option. Oh yeah, but you said I've seen a few clear masks. Um, so that's just something that, you know, it might be helpful for some students. Um, I can think of one particular one that's coming in for fall that um, will need captioning and or uh, cart services, real-time cart services and sign language, um, but he also re reads lips. So that is something that right now would be the only option would be that type of, of uh, mask with the portion of it that's clear. Um, you can go ahead to the next one. Whatever um, the university comes up with as far as regulations when we come back in the campus, as far as health regulations, um, our office is not going to determine, um, you know, health regulations. So that would be something that would be determined by the university. Um, okay, so on universal design, um, um, I wanted to point out that this, again, is the proactive measure to take with as far as accessibility. Um, I think accommodations, like when you receive a letter of accommodations, that's more on the reactive or the, um, uh, that's more reactive. So that's, you know, after going through a lot of steps, then you have a letter of accommodations. So UD, as much as we can get there, and we're never going to be there perfectly, um, but as long as we keep starting to make, um, you know, as long as we keep making moves towards that direction, it's going to be the best thing for everyone. I have had several professors that send students to our office that English is not their first language. And so they're sending them to our office for accommodations where we are an office of disability accommodations. And so that's not something that we can help them with, but universal design is certainly something that could help them. Um, if for instance, if you're captioning um, videos in your classroom, or if you're um, providing your materials in different formats, that is something that could help someone that English is not their first language. So, um, or you could think of other things. I'm sure you've had a lot of students that have come to their concern. Okay, we can go ahead, is there? Okay. Okay, and we can discuss particular accommodations um, separately here. Let's just keep right on track here for a moment, and then we can always come back to that. Um, uh, examples for teaching online. Um, I only have a few minutes, so I don't want to, you know, take it all up. But we can always do this in part two. Um, so back to examples of teaching online. So some things that are that are considered accessible and um, you know pointing towards that goal of universal design are using things like simple fonts. I like um, Verdana. Um, that's particularly my favorite. It is very accessible with screen readers. It is a good idea to take your headings down to the to one level down to the next level. Um, that's also helpful for screen readers. Using very good color contrast. So um, you could imagine if you have a very 
almost like what is in the box in the chat. It's almost like, you know, a very light gray on a white. So that's not really a very dark contrast to the white. Um, alt text, if you could add that to your images, like if you're making a PowerPoint, and then you can right click on the image that you added to your PowerPoint, and then you can just click on alt text, and then you just describe the image. So when a visually impaired person is using their screen reader, and then they, they get to that image, it'll give them an idea of what, what that image is. And then if you have links, for instance, with your PowerPoint, if you could, um, you can add an informative title so that if a person is, and this goes for like websites as well, if you, if they want to click over it and they actually will know where they're going because sometimes um, if they're using a screen reader, they, they might not know where they're going because it's not giving them enough description. Okay, go ahead. Now, this is not something that is your homework assignment, of course, but um, just to bring to your attention, uh, we have a web development team, of course, that this is something that they're the experts on, um, but we'll tag the web content accessibility guidelines. This, is, this has been in the past pretty much geared towards public universities. In, in uh, recent time, the, uh, there, there have been some private universities like Harvard that have been um, brought into a settlement agreement for not having um, accessible uh, areas. So they pointed to the WCAG as one thing so they, in other words, they're starting to use this uh, when judging private universities as well. So when you go back to those laws that I mentioned earlier, they basically are a little bit vague on um, just saying that you need to be accessible. Um, this WCAG has been pointed more to uh, public universities, but it's quickly becoming uh, the gold standard in accessibility. So pretty much everyone is needing to start following it as far as um, you know what's out there on the on the web that we're putting out there as UIW. Um, you can you can study this and study this and study this. It is very complex to me, um, but there's a link there if that's something that you want to investigate further. But again, um, our IT and you know, web development team are the experts. Okay, go ahead. And then some other tips. Um, I think one of the big things that's being a push right now is captioning. So it's going to be pretty important that when you're selecting uh, materials such as videos to present in your class that you select videos that have been captioned. If it's your content then it would need to be captioned and um, that's something also that your instructional technology team can um, direct you towards ways to, um, to do that, to give you some assistance with you know, getting the bulk of that done um, as far as instructions. Uh, and then you might have to go back in and like edit. So there are some tools um, that, that you can use to kind of in, uh, upload your video into that will give you the bulk of the transcript or the um, captioning, and then you might have to go in and fix a few words. You know how, even, I don't know how many of you might use captioning when you're watching TV, but there are a lot of errors. Uh, if you watch the news, there's a lot of errors. But we want to, you know, get it as close as possible. And, you know, YouTube content, um, there's an automatic captioning. There are a lot of errors in it, but, you know, that would be at minimum. Um, an option would be to utilize the, if you're going to put it through YouTube, um, the captioning that way, the auto captioning. And then if you have audio content, like just straight audio, if you could provide a transcript of that material. And um, so this, this goes to the, back to the point of providing the content in various ways. So for instance, Take that student that's it's not disability related but it might be the the language barrier um, the captioning would be very helpful a transcript of audio content would be very helpful for that student 
it might mean the difference between them passing and failing. Um, so when I've gone to some um, conferences, you know, everything is captioned, of course. And um, I find myself watching the captioning more than I'm watching the person speaking. So I just kind of uh, go right to that. So I think it's helpful for, for everyone. And, and I didn't even need the captioning. But um, so sometimes hearing the information and seeing the content um, in text can reinforce that information to the students. It could be a student that has um, difficulty processing. Um, so there's there's just so many different ways. It's it's not just the hearing impaired person. There's so many different students that could benefit from that type of of uh, university universal design and um, and thought about accessibility. You know, up up close. And um, yes, and Susan is mentioning it is stream that um, that you can do that with with the uploading of videos. Um, instructions clear, expectations very clear. Uh, this is this is not something new. Um, making assignments. Uh, that's part of the universal design is when you're making your assignments and you're thinking about all the possible backgrounds that the students might be coming from. Um, that is opening up accessibility to all of them. Universal design, all of the situations that they might be coming from and the different technological skills. Certainly, uh, we think students are the most tech savvy in the world um, because they're always on their phone, right? <laughs> but we, we don't know for sure, so um, we, we can't assume that they're all, you know, where they need to be on their technological skills. The outlines are very helpful and a lot of feedback. Um, students really want to get that feedback and um, even though they might not seem like they do, I think they really do. The ones I hear from anyway, they really are waiting and, you know, on that feedback and they want to hear that so they can um, get, you know, improve what they're doing and, and get better for the next time. Okay, go ahead. Um, and these are some things that, that I think Caesar are gonna, is going to go over soon, but just want to put them in the... Um, I wanted to include them in the PowerPoints that I'm sending out to you because these are the links to make PowerPoints presentations, accessible Word documents, Adobe, um, and then also Windows. So there is a screen reader in Narrator, and then um, you can adjust, um, like I said, the color contrast, size. I mean, these are things that would be helpful to a lot of people. Again, these are, and a lot of people don't realize they're in there. So I'm, I'm always telling students, hey, did you know this is in your, you know, on your computer? Did you know this about, um, and at the bottom there, Chrome uh, has a read aloud extension that you can easily add to your computer um, or Firefox. And for instance, I use the Chrome one and it has a little megaphone that it just pops up in my, the corner of my computer, which, you know, I've used that sometimes. Um, I have used recently in the Word documents the um, dictate function and because um, I had a little problem with the rotator cuff so you know typing all day has been a little challenging so I made my own accommodation there so um, and uh, Kathy pointed that one out I don't think I had noticed that one um, dictate we have some software, um, Dragon Natural Speaking, that we put on some students' laptops sometimes. But, you know, the more we can get them for free and that they can use from their home and not have to, you know, install something, the better. So all of these things are really wonderful tools that are out there for free. So I suggest you, you know, click on some of those links and play with some of those things and, and then tell your students about them too. Okay. Hop on down to the next one. The, the University of Washington has a wonderful, and I had to put a big red heart on this because I wanted it to stand out, um, the Do It Center. And um, that is just, 
Oh, they have so many different resources on the website. And, um, and so they uh, put also a link to the faculty room. They have, a, they have that there for faculty specifically to um, give you some information and online content publications, videos. Um, so I, I absolutely love this. I, I discovered this at a conference and uh, you know, the young lady there um, presenting the information from the center just brought all of this free publications to give out to everyone. And it was just, I, I said, okay, so you do all this for free? And it was just so incredible, everything that they were doing. And um, I just gave her a hug. I just had to give her a hug. So <laughs> anyway, um, so take a look at those links too. Okay, can we click on to the next one? Ready? Um, here's your homework. I've always wanted to say that, right? Um, so I wanted to, to take a look at uh, this individual's video. She is, Cheryl is the one that made, that actually created the Do It Center. And so she is the uh, guru on this situation. <laughs> um, she made a video and I'm not gonna expect you to look at it today, but if you do have a moment, um, 20 tips for teaching an accessible online course. She kind of takes you through the whole thought process on the subject and in a very easy to hear uh, way and uh, interesting. She's very interesting to listen to. And then she also has an article down there of the same information. So there's some really um, good tips in there and kind of explaining the purpose behind it as well. So she's, she's, uh, she's very helpful in this field. So I'd actually like to meet her one of these days. So if you could skip on to the next one. So as you're going through some of these tools and the ones that Caesar is gonna share with you or the ones that we'll share with you perhaps next week, um, you know, just take one at a time. Um, just because they're starting to look at private universities more and more, um, like Harvard is the one um, I was thinking of all places, Harvard is, uh, is one that really uh, ended up in a settlement um, regarding accessibility. So, um, so now they're, you know, they're starting to really press on the, the private universities instead of just the public universities. So we just want to make all the strides we can towards full accessibility and using all these tools as we go along. And, um, you know, one thing at a time. When I, when I try to think of everything I need to do at one time, I get overwhelmed feeling. And then I have to say, okay, I have to get my to-do list out, and which is something I do every day. I, I have to have my to-do list. I have all kinds of lists, lists, lists. But um, the thing is one thing at a time, just like you tell your students. And I know your students come to you feeling really overwhelmed. And um, Susan, I'm glad you like the University of Washington. They are amazing. <laughs> um, yes, definitely look at the links, uh, Dr. Moon, and thank you for being here. Um, and, don't, and don't forget to reach out to Instructional Technology. Um, we have over, oh, just in the recent years here, this amazing Instructional Technology team has developed and um, that, ha you know, that I don't think it's ever been this this good as far as support with that arena. So um, just wanted to give a good shout out to everybody on that team and how, how much they're working and doing, uh, you know, for everyone here and supporting, supporting everyone. Uh, we're in Student Disability Services, so definitely reach out to us. You know, no matter what, where, what we're doing, we're teaching a class or we're I'm, you know, in the disability, we're all in the same mission. So the same exact mission is that graduation day. And like the young lady in that picture, um, the clock tower, that's, that's the whole thing right there. And unfortunately, our graduates couldn't have their, you know, their normal graduation. But I'm hoping that this virtual graduation is going to be something that they can remember as well and participate in. So um, you know, that's coming up soon. And so I 
I'm just glad that with these technology tools that I'm actually able to do the majority of my job from home right now uh, with all of these amazing tools that have come forth. So um, uh, there was a question there, did your office follow up with students with documentation? Do we follow up with students with documentation? So students provide our office with medical or professional documentation. So that, I'm not sure I'm understanding that question completely, but um, oh, could you pop to the next one? I think that's towards the end of our presentation. Yeah, just, I think I probably went over my time of this workshop today, but I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, and that was a quick overview. So I wanted to um, let you know that we're here to be a resource. So whatever we can do to support you in supporting our students, um, definitely let us know. So with that, I will turn it back over to Dr. Holm. Actually, I believe it's time for Caesar. Caesar, are you going to be showing us a couple tools? Yes, correct. I'll be demonstrating some. I'm going to demonstrate three tools. Do that. And um, again, accessibility and online learning, just supporting equity in a remote learning environment. And how can you help students with learning difference? I'll be demonstrating a tool, it's called Immersive Reader. And it's a learning tool, again, it's um, students listen to the text being out loud as words are highlighted. And you choose how content is presented visually and it's translated over 60 languages. It has a built-in dictionary, and it, you can use it in Word, Outlook, OneNote, uh, Microsoft Edge, Teams, and Office Lens. And I'll, I'm also gonna demonstrate the dictation tool that was mentioned earlier. Again, um, some students really struggle with their ideas in paper, and with dictation, you just speak, and it types for you, and I'll be demonstrating that also for you. And the third, tool, the, the third tool that I'll be demonstrating is, um, again, it helps with um, students that are deaf or hard of hearing. It's adding live subtitles to your PowerPoint presentations. And I'll be demonstrating those, those three tools for you. And this is my reference that I use for my information. And here's my contact information in case you need help with any of the tools that I'll be demonstrating this afternoon. So let me go ahead and demonstrate it for you. Share my screen. So the first tool that I'm going to demonstrate is the dictation tool. And here I logged into my Microsoft Office 365 account. I just went to the, um, to the waffle on the top left hand side and I click on the word, the um, online word document. And then to um, activate the detection tool, it's here within the tools. And I'm going to click on the um, microphone icon. Make some space here. I'm going to click on the microphone icon. And it activates the microphone. And I can start talking. And I'm going to start reading a document on my right hand side. I, I'm going to it says, a sudden switch to remote learning is going to be challenging for all students. But for students with learning needs, this will be amplified and increased frustration and anxiety. Here are some tools and tips that are free and already built into devices that will help our students meet their individual learning needs. 
right here you can stop it again this is a tool that you could um, you can use yourself or you can share with your students and again it's easy for um, it's a, it's called a dictation tool and it helps students um, type it helps with their getting uh, their ideas on paper and start some um, brainstorming on creating their their essays and another tool that I'm gonna demonstrate it's called the immersive tool. It's part here also of this Word, online Word. Let me demonstrate that for you. Let me increase my window so you can see it. So I'm gonna go to view on the top left-hand side. It's um, insert layout references review view. I'm gonna go to view and I'm gonna click on immersive reader. Let me make sure that see. I'm gonna make sure that you could, I'm gonna make sure that I share my audio so you could hear my computer also. There you go. And here, this is immersive reader and I could, um, I hit play. And it activates the microphone, and I can start talking, and I'm going to start reading a document on my right hand side. I am going to say is a sudden switch to remote learning is going to be challenged. And I could also control the voice settings. I could either go fast or I can go slow. Let me show you. Challenging for all students, but for students with learning is this would be amplified and increased frustration and anxiety. Here are some tools or, and tips that are free and the, already built into I could also the devices will help our students meet their individual. So again, it reads back the text to the student. You could also adjust the text preference. You could, um, people that have um, eyesight issue, I mean eyesight also, they could also uh, adjust the text size. Or you could also increase the space, the spacing in between the words. You could also choose a different font that makes it easy for, a, for you or a student to read a particular document. Also, people that are colorblind, colorblind, you can adjust the background. And there's additional colors also. And here under grammar options, you could also um, choose if you want to specify a different like noun, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Also reading preferences. You could also like for people like students that just want to focus in a particular area, like a sentence or an area in the paragraph. If I just want to focus on that paragraph. And students that are bilingual, like for me that I speak also Spanish, I could choose Spanish also, which helps me. Let's see, where's Spanish? Spanish, Mexico. So if I could, let me take off the focus. Like for example, if I want to activate, I could have it read it to me, activate. A activate. Or if I'm bilingual, if a student is bilingual, I could have a. Activa. And there's also images. This is a microphone. It shows, it has English, Spanish. I speak Spanish and it shows a picture of a microphone also. Or talking, you see talking, a blood, and then pictures of talking, document, there's a document. So again, this is a different way of learning the material, the content. And again, I was gonna show you the focus. Close, 
I want to start. I just want to focus on the first sentence and I want it to speak. And it activates the microphone and I can start talking and I'm going to start reading a document on my right hand side. I am going to say as a. Or again, if I want this to be read in Spanish because I'm a bilingual student, my language is Spanish. I can speak translate in Spanish and I want the whole document to be read, read in Spanish because I, I learn better in Spanish. So I'm going to hit play. Y activa el micrófono y puedo empezar a hablar y voy a empezar a leer un documento en mi lado derecho. Voy a decir que es un cambio repentino al aprendizaje remoto. Va a ser un reto para todos. And you could adjust the, this is too fat of the Spanish, because you want to learn the Spanish better. Los estudiantes. You could adjust Pero the, para los... And you can go back to the original English. And again, this is the immersive reader tool. And it's located here on the top left hand side. The next tool that I'm going to share with you is called the subtitles. Um, question. Sure. Get a question that uh, if it works with Outlook as well. Can yes, it does work with Outlook as well. Let me show you. Where is my Outlook? I think uh, it's a, um, see. So in Outlook, like if where this is a message, you just click here, it's show, show immersive reader. And then you just hit play. Thank you. I signed up for a training workshop starting on June 1st. So again, you can use it in Microsoft Outlook. Does it work for uh, ExamSoft for the exam questions? This is um, a Microsoft Microsoft Office 365, so it works with Outlook, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, OneNote. Uh huh. Okay. Now I'm just trying to see how uh, if if you ha already have the questions, right? The questions are going to be typed in Word but they are in a different soft, uh, soft software, right? Like ExamSoft. Right. How can we use this tool to be able to read questions in that software? Is that possible? Is there an interface for this tool? For, for ExamSoft? Or I, yeah. Well, I have to do some research, but I can get back with you in that question, sir. Thank you for oh, the question. I, I don't, it, it would depend on if ExamSoft offered that service or not, because it's a separate app. So um, it wouldn't necessarily use this version of it. And as far as I'm aware, um, ExamSoft does not have the built-in reader that I'm aware of. We use ExamSoft, that's the reason I'm saying that. Yeah. Thank you so for the question. We had a question about um, the accuracy of the translations. How do we know that the translations are reasonably good? Yeah, um, based on from my I mean, what I've seen from the English to Spanish translation, it, lo it looks pretty pretty accurate. And it's Microsoft. Microsoft is always um, updating their translation because it's over sixty languages that they're always working on that translation on the accuracy. And I'm also going to be demonstrating the subtitles, and you're going to see how my it's going to pick up my audio, my voice recognition also. So let and me demonstrate. Did you just say that the immersive reader works with 60 different languages? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one that I'm going to demonstrate is the um, live subtitles. So here um, you, I uploaded my PowerPoint to my um, Office, 360, Office 365 PowerPoint. And I'm going to... I'm going to go to Slideshow. And here I'm gonna choose always use subtitles. Spoken language, you see all those like different languages. So I'm gonna choose English and then subtitles, English. 
And I want, to, I want the subtitles below the slide. And then once I'm ready to, I already chosen the subtitles, I'm gonna click on from beginning. And then to activate the subtitles here at the bottom right hand side is very small. There's like a little square with a little line going above it. I'm gonna click on it to activate the subtitles. Here, let me, let me. Cesar, can you say where that is again? Cause yeah, on, I'm gonna, on our I'm screen gonna, we can't see it. I'm gonna see if I could circle it. It's in the lower left hand corner. And it's in the lower left hand corner. Yeah, we probably can't see it because the controls are okay. in, oh, there you go. That's, it's right here yeah, at the okay. bottom left-hand side. Thank you for asking. So I'm gonna click on it to activate it. And that's to activate the, the subtitles. And right now I'm speaking and it's picking up my subtitles. So uh, while I'm speaking, I say it's supporting equity and remote learning environment. So here I'm demonstrating how the subtitles are working. And then I'm gonna to go to my next slide. How can you help students with learning differences? Again, through immersive reader, which I demonstrated earlier, and learning tools. And again, the tool, the immersive tool that I demonstrated with you earlier is um, with the immersive reader, you can listen to text being out loud, choose how content is presented visually. And again, I show you how it has a built-in dictionary, has real-time vocabulary, and again, Immersive Reader, again, can be used in Word, OneNote, Teams, Office Lens, Microsoft Edge browser. And I also demonstrated to you the dictation tool. This is an awesome tool to, that I've been using also. It helps me um, less typing in my keyboard. Now I just speak and mm -hmm. it types in right into Word. It types in right into my emails. And I feel that it's my personal assistant, this dictation tool. I hope you get to try it. And I'm also demonstrating to you right now the uh, subtitles. You just upload your PowerPoints to the Office 365 PowerPoints. And you could, as you can see right now, I'm in Zoom. I'm showing you my PowerPoint. And I'm, this is um, the subtitles are live. I'm speaking and the subtitles are showing. This helps students that are deaf or hard and seen, but it also helps other learners that like for example, myself, I have a very strong Spanish accent and some people have, find that difficult to understand, but with subtitles, you're able to understand me better because you're able to understand what I'm trying to, the message that I'm relaying to you all. And this concludes my presentation on the three tools that I demonstrate to you with this, this afternoon. If you have any questions about these three tools, I'd be willing to um, help you out with these three tools. Thank you very much for your attention. Caesar, um, Michael has a question. Yes, yeah, so it looks like for the subtitle feature that this is um, uh, basically live captioning as you're talking. It is, um, yeah. That's being superimposed upon the PowerPoint. So if we're present, does, is there a way for that captioning to then be put into a document that can be sent to the student? Because if we're not recording class, mm -hmm. the student may not be able to take notes reading the captioning as we are trying to talk as well. You, you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like watching TV and having to take notes and read the captioning all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I'm noticing is, oh, it's, it's doing what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> so, so what I'm noticing is that it's only one or two lines at a time. And right. so if a student needed to catch something and go back, is there a way to do that? Or do we just need to record this, the session live if we're doing it live yeah so one option is to uh, right now you could record it live and you can share it with the student also afterwards also because the live captioning is being captured while this is being recorded okay so so michael maybe you could screen record that's what i think yeah i was just wondering if it actually captured sure that's a good a question. document like you know the video yeah. portions captured mm -hmm. but does it actually capture the uh, subtitled piece that could be then put into a document by itself because I, I certainly will not go back and 
retype all that, you no, know? No, no. So it's so just trying to figure out how you can get it to the students so they can see it. Sure. And we can look into that. I'm not sure that that actually is is possible at this point. But okay. we'll definitely look into it, Michael. All know. right, no worries. I, I just didn't know. This is the first time I've seen this, so. No, it is really, like you said, it really is live captioning. So. Thank you. Well, thank great you, great information. Oh, you're welcome. Hope you can try one of these tools. So it's what's exciting for us is that Microsoft, and we'll have more of these tools next week, but Microsoft has really been um, putting a lot of time and effort and money into um, accessibility and uh, education. So um, we, again, next week we'll have, uh, there are more tools to share and uh, Michelle will be with us next week as well. And then we'll have a few more Microsoft tools. Um, so we thank you for um, your time. Were there any questions for either of the presenters? Oh, well, and just a, just a little teaser because it came up. We will be talking about Stream, which is a Microsoft product already available to us that closed captions in several languages. I don't know about 60, but Caesar will let us know next week. And also it um, trans transcribes, provides a transcription of the video in, in a number of languages as well. So we're, I, we get excited about Microsoft. I don't know if anybody else does, but um, we are just very, we feel like we're very fortunate to have that suite of products. So um, thank you so much. And Susan, do you have any parting Oh, thoughts? well, I just want to do the shameless promotion for next <laughs> Uh, Teresa Partridge will be talking about Carol Dweck's work on the growth mindset and ways to kind of implement that in, uh, in an online setting. Um, we'll also have some specific tools to kind of help that process along. So I uh, hope to see you next week. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye and thanks.